Hey, talking tunes, and we're here with, with the amazing, I was going to say Beth Beeman, but I should say the amazing Tim Wheeler. It fits better when you say amazing Beth Beeman. Really? Yeah, I think <laughs> so. It's the alliteration I, factor. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's better, too, but anyway. <laughs> so Beth Beeman is here to, from the, uh, the Playhouse in White Lake, and of course, uh, Tim Wheeler is here because he has something wonderful to talk about that uh, you've been working on for a while and you're excited about. She's waving at you. I don't know what's going on. Hi, over Beth. Here. Hey, how you doing? No, it's just a little. It's, so, uh, it's social distance it's radio. A fly. So, so, yeah, we're in my beautiful garage. It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> I promise not to social distance from the microphone. <laughs> there we go. That's better. Well, the nice thing is it's outside. You know. Oh yeah. Garage door open. It's beautiful. It's actually not Africa hot like it was yesterday. Yeah, mm-hmm. yesterday that was, was kind warm. of unbearable. Yeah. Um, on Tuesday, it was especially unbearable. Yeah. So today is is a pretty good day. The yeah. red-winged blackbird, though, is getting a little territorial, so you probably should not have worn your crow costume. Because <laughs> we're not sure. So you're on your own if you but die But you know bombs, what? Right? It's that day. It's crow co- costume day. Didn't you get the menu? Oh, yeah, there Mem- you go. The memo? Come on! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yesterday when I did an interview, I, I sat here and watched a, a turtle go from right across my driveway. <laughs> And I was I was trying to, to you know pay attention to the interview, but it was just so so yeah. They just how long was it going to take to get across that driveway? It was it was, was that kind of like the clock for the yeah, ending of the kinda, interview? Like, like, like okay, when the you know gets to like midpoint, we're halfway through the interview. <laughs> that's right. He gets to the other side, we're done. And then today I saw uh, over the, some guy stopped on the road and he picked up a, the turtle. It was sure. over here. Picked up the turtle and showed it to his kid or his wife or something. I don't know. And then he, you know, I was about ready to yell at him, put him in my pond. But, you know, (laughs) then he took off. But anyway. Did he take off with the turtle? No, he didn't put the turtle back. So there was no turtle turtle abduction. Yes. Do you know that turtles, if you do take them from their spot, they will wander around until they die because they can only go within a certain distance from where they were actually born because it's an area they know, but they will continue to try to go back to it. And if they can't find it, then they just kind of die. Well, now I got to go find that turtle. <laughs> so After this interview, we're all going to go search for a turtle. Put an APB out on the turtle. <laughs> Oscar, can you describe the turtle? What was he wearing? Uh, a shell. Yeah. <laughs> he was naked other than his shell. Yeah. He had a long neck, too. I was pretty impressed. But anyway, uh, let's... We let's... are clearly on script. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure where to look on my script here. But anyway, yeah, cartoon... Well, he has a script. He's ahead of us. He is actually ahead of us. Now, why, why don't you explain exactly, instead of me trying to read it here, why don't you explain exactly <laughs> what, what you're doing with the cartoons for the kids? Okay, here's kind of the elevator pitch version, is that uh, we make cartoons because we want to rescue childhood. Okay. Uh, we want a world where every single kid on this planet is safe, secure, and silly. And the way that we're going about doing that is we create what's called cartoon versation kits. So that if I do my job right, kids are being listened to, kids are laughing, and kids are sitting with parents, caregivers, teachers, counselors, and they are simply letting the, the people know who can help them, letting them know what's going on in their world so that everybody who wants to do their job and help a kid can do their job. Um, what I always say is it, it kind of replaces that awkward moment when a well-intended teacher or a counselor will call, and Beth will pretend you're in third grade here, okay. um, where, where Beth gets called into <laughs> the, the, the counselor's office and all of a sudden the counselor goes, Beth, how are you? You're like, well, I was fine until the creepy old guy asked me how I'm doing. (laughs) Now I'm going to stare at my shoes and wait for this test to be over. So even though that person has the greatest intentions in the world, it's a lot. It's difficult to to get that door open. Mm -hmm. But what I've I've seen it hundreds and hundreds of times. Once the door is open, these kids will let you know what they're feeling, what they're experiencing, Mm -hmm. and more importantly, what they need. And what I found, because I'm just not smart enough to live in the adult world, is that I just didn't find anything and I didn't see anything that was really designed for kids. It seemed to me that the uh, other products that I would find out there would be made by adults, communicated to adults, who then had an in-service with adults so that they could show other adults what to do. And I just thought, at what point did anybody consult the kid? Even yeah. though, again, everybody's intentions are absolutely spot on. Uh, and like I said, I, I, I don't have the brain power to figure out that high-level <laughs> stuff. So I said, I think in cartoon anyway, why don't we do this? And that's really the genesis of how, mm. how we started. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
All right, because uh, you know, I was reading here about the the police officers using the cartoons to discuss the different topics with the kids and stuff like that. And that's sounded like, but the thing that really caught my eye caught my eye when you had the Rocket Tunes uh, launched in 2017, but you kind of compare it to Schoolhouse Rocks. Yeah, what and, I, that, and that I mean, I loved Schoolhouse Rocks when I was a kid. You know, that was that was it. So mm-hmm. I can see if it's anything like that, that it would def- definitely catch your attention. Okay. Yeah, what, what I often say, even though mine aren't musical in nature, because uh, you know, we're, we, we can all sing, um, you know, Bill on Capitol Hill and Conjunction Junction, they're, they're yeah, stuck yeah, in our, yeah. our, our Three heads Three is the magic forever. number. Yeah, my favorite, naughty number nine. Uh, <laughs> do your own psychological evaluation there. Um, but what, I, what, I, what I've often said is that consider these 21st century schoolhouse rocks. So instead of talking about the Bill on Capitol Hill mm-hmm. or Conjunction, uh, conjunctions. What we do talk about are the most serious things you can think of, and they're all tied to um, the ACEs study, adverse childhood experiences. So our topics cover things like divorce, death of a loved one, cyberbullying, resilience, mindfulness, moving to a new school, um, the grieving process, school violence, you know, every cheery topic you could possibly think of, yeah. but they're all relevant and they have to be discussed. I just made the decision that what if we filtered these through the cartooniverse, as I call it, and see how the kids react. And it has been, as I always say, it's heartbreaking that these are the topics we cover, but it's an absolute joy to watch the kids react and to watch whomever the the adult is in the room. When they try to do their job, kids are, are just, they're, they're totally receptive to it. Right. They right. just want to talk. Right. And they want to be heard. I think that's the important thing. Mm-hmm. They want someone to listen to them. And what about what about uh, with the coronavirus thing going on now? You got anything coming up about that or I mean dealing with that the, the new norm, I guess? Officially no. Okay. Um if you go into my office, uh, you'll find eight zillion post-it notes on the wall that actually are in order. They make sense to me. <laughs> and there are several that I've started just in case there is a, a partner, a client out there that wants us to address that topic. Um, I'm sure we're going to find out that there there is somebody eventually. But mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, I'm glad that you brought that up, though, because you know I, I do a lot of work with law enforcement. I do want to talk about them. Um, but what we've common sense I should have known this but what we've learned is in the shutdown a whole bunch of kids are now under the roof with the source of their trauma and they don't have an out so we've really been trying every channel possible to remind people that you don't need to be a counselor to use these you don't need to be a teacher to use these there is zero in-service training if you have an internet connection and you know how to hit the play button you're in right because each cartoon comes with what we call a cartoon versation card so it's as simple as this oscar you watch the cartoon together and then there are five questions five factoids you ask one of them two of them it doesn't matter and you just start talking with the kids and then let the conversation flow wherever it flows so if if you have five different groups doing the exact same cartoon you're going to have five different paths and that's what we want we want this system, I call it structured flexibility. We've got an organization to it, but then we put it into the hands of the individuals, and wherever that goes organically, perfect. That's mm-hmm. what we want. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, like I say, the other thing I wanted to point out too, that it's all free. I mean, that that to me was, was great to hear because you got some wonderful sponsors to, to sponsor this. So so if anybody wants to do it, they could, you know, they just go to the cartoon Versation. Mm-hmm. Cartoonversation.com. <laughs> That's, hard. That's hard to say. It's Copyrighted. Cartoonversation.com. <laughs> right. And then Rockatoons.com. It's very simple. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they can go right there. Yeah, they there just put in their county and state, right? Yeah, Is and it? actually, we've added something new. Um, for it, Anyone in the United States and Canada can use it. And we have been looking to see where people are coming from. And uh, I checked the other day. It's 47 states, the District of Columbia, and my favorite, every single province and territory in Canada because Canadians love cartoons. That's Stop. Highest, <laughs> highest per capita of animation studios on the planet. That's why they're so Canada. happy all the time. They're happy. Dang. I know. That's they why love Canadians cartoons. Canadians are happy. They yeah. watch cartoons. Hey, they've been watching Fred Flintstone for mm-hmm. years. I love that. I do too. But <laughs> we got to get some accents in there now. I, I, eh? Eh? <laughs> well, you know, that's another story for episode 15, which is based on a Canadian band. Um, but um, 
anyway, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a whole story in and of itself. Um, but in Michigan, you don't even have to type in your county anymore because uh, Kevin, my wonderful IT guy, who everything he says all goes over my head and then I wait for him to re-explain it. Um, but there is a map on the website and all you do is put the cursor on your county, click, you're in. Hmm. That's all you have to do. And I think that's important, too, for people to know is that I don't know who you are. I don't know where you are. I didn't ask for your phone number, your name, nothing. And we don't care. And the cartoons themselves are, I mean, what's the length? Are they like two to three minutes? I mean, they're not full-length cartoons. They're they're nice little snippets, um, and they're funny and clever. Um, you know, the graphics are really cool. Uh, and it's Thank just you. a fun way. You know, it is... It, it's a fun way to talk about some serious things. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I have been a big fan of uh, Rocket Tunes since, you know, when you first started this project. And I just think well, it's amazing. you're the one that told amazing. me about it, too. Yeah, yeah and it, it's just, yeah. I tell everyone I know. I mean, like, yeah. if you've got kids or grandkids or, you know, you've got kids that you care about, um, and it's a way to connect with them, and it's a way to engage them that's not, you know, oh, for the love of God, uh, what is it, um, Popsicle. Yeah. You know, that Popsicle, Pop, Popsicle. <laughs> and my grandson Cole loves it, and he's like, Grandma, can we watch that when we get to your house? Or Baby Shark, which his mom hates and won't let him watch or listen to, but I'm like, yeah, of course you can. But it's a nice way to engage with young people and having a, have a meaningful conversation about really tough stuff. Um, and some of it won't apply to all kids, but... But it's good to talk about it because then they know if they hear about it or they have a friend who's experiencing it. Um, I think it's just really great stuff. So good Thank work. Thank you. Tim. Thank you very much. Well, I'm a know, big the, fan. The one, the one thing about Tim too. I, now I met Tim. I think it was back in 19. I think right when I started when I moved into Muskegon, which is 2002. Yeah. Oh, was it? Was it? Well, that we started way? working. I started working in town in '99, and yeah, I would I would have met you then. I, yeah. 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 Because yep. we we talked about because you you made the. Uh, Hackley commercials, mm -hmm. and they were just, oh my they God. were hilarious. Well, well thank you very much. They were just wonderful, you know, and the, the humor right there. I mean, one thing I was looking at, too, it says here now, you know, we're going to talk about how good you are here, 250 national and international awards. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. What nobody knows is I just bought those on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just, I went to the engraver and I put my name on. Yeah, yeah. Well, he did. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of them look like golf statues, so I don't quite get yeah, that, 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 that. Whatever. Same, yeah, the same the golfer on them, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, we started doing that back in the hospital because we knew that traditionally humor is not the first thing. That's not the default for doctors right, when they right. want to advertise. Right. And um, you remember Melissa, Melissa Fry, my oh, yeah, boss. Melissa Fry, yeah. Uh, and, and God bless her because she let me do these things, even mm -hmm. though she was the one that, you know, she was the firewall. Yeah. Um, and I only remember how it came about, but at one point I said, you know, if we enter um, into some sort of competition and we got a trophy, you can use that thing as a weapon because you can walk into those meetings set it down and go look we do know what we're doing yeah. and that's really how it started and then i'll fully admit we got greedy um and we just wanted to keep testing to see if the things we were trying uh were working and then that branched out into all of my other clients and then it's mm -hmm. also i've done the same thing with the cartoons uh and i joke about the awards um but i, I will admit that for the cartoons in particular, I'm extremely proud because we entered those in 22 national and international competitions and we won 21. That's and yeah, amazing. I'm still ticked off about the one that we did win. <laughs> but because, uh, you know, in, in, in isolation, you think this stuff works. Your friends laugh at it. They tell you it works. Yeah. But do they? You know, how do they stack up against everything else out there? And that's really one of the ways that we'll test is to go after these awards just to see how we do. Mm -hmm. And knock on wood so far yeah everybody seems to like them well it's just like testing the, the radio show you know i know my sister listens in florida but that's about it you know so <laughs> I, I have no idea if anybody else listens but, uh, hey you got one loyal listener yeah there you go that's yeah, ahead of the that's right. you're ahead of the that's curve right. well that turtle was listening Who's that? The turtle was listening, oh, turtle, so hopefully, yeah. hopefully well, he or she will be back. It was almost a spit take. <laughs> yeah. he was walking, the computer. <laughs> walking a little extra slow there for me mm -hmm. and just to say, hey, check it out, babe. Anyway. <laughs> he was trying to get to his radio. Yeah. Right. Very slowly. I got to go tell my grandma. Tried to, tried to find a microphone, but anyway, yeah. Uh -huh. Anyway, um, yeah, so like I say, it's all free, and now I've got uh, seven kids and 20, I think it's 23 grandkids wow. now. Holy wow. So I think, you know, you're, I'm going to show this to, it, to, to all of them, so I'm sure the, you know, you're, it'll go way up as far as people watching these things. I love it. 
Yeah, yeah the, the Osbo clan has jumped yeah. on board. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So, yeah. You I'll know, be. there's one, one thing I, I want to always make sure I talk about this, especially because of the shutdown and everybody's, you know, schooling at home, schooling right. in, 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 in place, is that everything is already aligned with all state teaching standards. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Beth, I think since the last time we talked, we now have them all aligned with the five core competencies of social-emotional learning. Wow. So those are great things, but w- what also is wonderful is that for teachers out there, you, know, you, you are still struggling with, we have to put these lesson plans together for these kids, and they're not in school, and it's hard to gauge. Everything on the website is is all that you need. We've got the white papers on there by grade. And if you show, let me make sure I word this right, structured video followed by facilitated conversation, which is the clever way of watch a cartoon and talk about it. But if you do that, and let's say you're in fourth grade, then you open up the, the white papers for fourth grade, and there's three and a half pages of all of the ELA standards that are met by doing that. And I have a wonderful teacher, uh, Sherry Krakowski, who's been, been a huge supporter from day one. And she told me once, she said, Tim, if I spend 20 minutes with the cartoon and with talking about it, she goes, I can go back to that giant 45-pound three-ring binder of state standards. And she goes, I eliminated 100 minutes of work. Oh. So we save them 80 minutes, yet every box that needs to be checked gets checked Mm -hmm. so if you are a teacher and you're looking for something else to to share with your kiddos while they're not in your classroom let them know about Mm rocket tunes let them know about cartoonversation.com because it's all there it's all free you can use it however you want and the kiddos can use it however they want and that's why we did it now this one here of course right now school violence isn't are really a problem because there's no nobody in school. Mm-hmm. Well, but, people but do have do siblings. Have, yeah, what's that? I do, people do have siblings. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sibling violence. Okay, there's our Sibling new episode. Violence. Yeah. <laughs> but you got that uh uh, protect tunes that mm-hmm. you're working on mm-hmm. here too so that's, that's yeah something. that's a whole series that is again unfortunately um, for the rise in school violence or violence in public places right. and it's using a language that kids understand so that they can they have a better chance of acting instinctively if something bad happens they have a better chance of identifying it before it happens but one of the biggest ones uh, not, not to get too heavy here but study after study after study and there was one done just recently called what school shooters have in common and, and it was an exhaustive two-year study of every school and public shooting since Columbine in 99 and what they found was that 90% of all school sh- school shooters were students in the building they were you know they were kids who go to school there yeah. and 80% of them had reached out for help okay they didn't want to do it and then this amazing point, they said, we actually interviewed several would-be shooters, kids who had changed their mind. 100% of them said, I didn't because an adult reached out and asked me how I was. Okay. That's right. it. So yeah. the, the cartoons, you know, we use the, the law enforcement goes in for the cartoon conversation read-along, which is a whole other topic. Um and they get the kids talking, and all of a sudden, these kids are forming these positive relationships with police officers who know how to recognize some of these warning signs. And it's just, it's a joy to watch these men and women who are pretty tough people yeah. sit down and read the books with the kids and sit down and watch the cartoons with mm-hmm. the kids and then how they react together. So, I so, just love it. So recognize, I mean, just for an example, I mean, what do you mean as far as recognize? Because I know a lot of people always say that the shooters usually are the quiet kids that don't, you know, but I mean, how do you recognize that this person is having so much trouble the, the honest the, the easiest thing to do is you have a conversation but again that's that's not that easy to figure out how to start so that's yeah. what the cartoons do mm-hmm. so when you have a conversation with a group of kids and let's say you watch episode one of protect tunes and you're going through you know do you know five places to hide and i'm just going to make something up and if a child goes well i know several places to hide because i have them all over my house because of my dad uh, now the red flag is flying, yeah. and these people who have far more uh, credentials than I do, they know how to interact with that kid. But now that kid has one-on-one with an adult that, honestly, they didn't have before. Right. And that seems to be the tipping point. If they just feel 
like someone's listening, mm-hmm. it sets them on the right path. Right. And, you know, like I said, the study itself actually talked to these kids and every single one of them said similar things that because somebody said, how are you doing today? Because somebody stayed around to listen to the answer, mm-hmm. they're doing better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I could have used this 40 years ago when I was raising my kids. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's here for your grandkids, so yeah, that's yeah, perfect. Well, yeah, now they don't bring them over. But anyway. No. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, well, how would you deal with, um, do you have anything that when they deal with, you've got one in there where they deal with death. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So right now is a really rough time because yeah. there's no funerals or if there's like, what, 10 people max or something like that mm-hmm. at a funeral these days. Um, of course, the kid's still going to lose their grandparent or, or whatever, and they aren't going to be able to see him or anything else or know anything about it or grieve it, so they, you've got actually programs for that too, right? Yeah, we have one episode that's in the Rakatoons series deals, I mean, it's quite literally the death of a loved one, okay. and it does help with starting that grieving process and you you know you bring up a great point it's mm-hmm. even more important to start that grieving process in this upside down world of we didn't get the funeral we didn't get the traditional closure and connection to family so these kids and these parents are kind of drifting with how do we deal with this right. mm-hmm. um, but there's another series there that's online that's also free it's called Lewis Ray Finds His Way and that is um, episode one is done and it's up but there will be a total of six episodes and it is quite literally following the six stages of grieving We're, uh, a wonderful friend and a spectacular partner her name is uh, Stephanie Kohler and she's the executive director of Lori's Place down in St. Joe and they are a nonprofit that their primary goal is to help families and kids in particular who've experienced death. Right. So Stephanie is my technical advisor, and she shows me exactly, Tim, say this, don't say that, and then now go be creative with it. So we quite literally have cartoons to walk you through that process. And again, the, the cartoon, if I did my job right, they're fun, but the most important part is then you sit down and you just chat. Right. And listen. And if you don't know where to start, that's what the cartoon conversation card is for. Okay. And it's all online too. All right. Sounds good. So it's cartoonversation dot uh-huh. com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or rocket two O's. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and and they both go yeah. to the same site. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they they do go th- go to the same site. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll definitely remember the rocketunes.com. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Rocketunes was the first series that we started, but then people have been asking for more, you know, different series and we've been adding them all to the same spot and I thought, well, they all use the cartoon conversation, so Yeah. And you know, we we just bought that that domain name and directed it there too. Cartoon conversation. Yeah. You say mm-hmm. it so much better. Cartoon conversation. Yeah. It'll eventually roll it'll, out it'll, your tongue. It'll roll somewhere. I don't know. Uh, uh, <laughs> my tongue but it'll roll somewhere yeah so anything else that you wanted to to, to mention about that um yeah so hit, hit me in the head if i go too long with this i do want to cover the cartoon versation read along because that was we had that oh, yeah. up, up, up and running before the shutdown yeah. but we're doing it remotely now and that is law enforcement will go into the classrooms oh that's right i have present for you Oscar law enforcement goes into the classrooms and they will watch a cartoon they pick it they get to pick whatever they want okay um, and then they show the cartoons together with the kiddos and then they have the cartoon conversation there are stickers for you of some of the characters I think that was a six foot week that, yeah I know it was that's pretty good Look at, right, right, his, right over the big mouth Billy Bass yeah, yes yeah. He's, he's the line the bass, <laughs> the if, bass if we had if line. we had broached the line he would have gone off <laughs> yes so that's what the censor is for he's I actually been reprogrammed yeah. I haven't turned off we don't want to hear don't worry be happy right now so, <laughs> so the, the officers go in and uh, whenever possible we have a bunch of these books that are printed up and they are essentially the cartoons turned into books or as the Michigan Reading Association told me they're interactive read-alouds which makes me sound smarter um (laughs) but the 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 reaction of law enforcement from the uh, norton shores police department Mm -hmm. to the north muskegon police department to the muskegon sheriff's department has just floored me absolutely positively floored me how these guys are these men and women are all over this thing yeah. um, Sheriff Poulin had a great line once when we were just getting started with it and uh, uh, we asked him he said how do your how do your officers feel about 
going into a room full of fourth graders to lead a conversation without missing a beat. He goes, they'd rather go to an armed robbery. <laughs> he, it, it, but then he followed up. He said, they want to. They desperately want yeah. to. He goes, but that's not what we were trained to do. And, you know, talking in front of 28 <laughs> fourth graders is not an easy task if that's not your skill set. Right. So they've fallen in love with this program because it's plug and play. Yeah. They know what they're doing. They just don't know how to get that, get it started. Yeah. The, con- the cartoon conversation, that's the only missing piece they, that they needed. And it's so fun to watch them. Okay, I can imagine work that that the, would the be kids. that would make them a little bit more approachable too, because most people we see a police officer and it's like, what did I do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. That was my mom. That wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's so key is that they. I, I didn't bring the studies with me, but I've got a, psh, piles of them in my office about the value of starting and maintaining these positive relationships between law enforcement and at the risk of stating something that's probably obvious the younger you start that the better off everyone is yeah. for, for a zillion different reasons and all of the officers that I've worked with I, I just I haven't met one yet that just hasn't looked at me and said when can I go hmm. where can I go or, or others have called me. Uh, Officer Nelson from North Muskegon emailed me just before the shutdown. He says, uh, I have schedules in all of these second grade classes and all these third grade classes. Can you stop by and drop stickers off? And if you want to come in and talk to, all on his own, just out of the blue, put this whole table together, organized it with the teachers. The teachers love it yeah. because the kids, again, thanks to the state standards, they still did their job. Right. But now they've got this speaker in, and the teacher can take a step back, maybe take a breath, right. um, and watch this happen as well. And it, it's just, it's, it's been received so wonderfully. If I'd had tried to think it through, I would have screwed it all up. So <laughs> I, luck, I lucked out that it all fell into place. <laughs> that was another thing we were talking about before we started talking here is that uh, all the people that uh, kind of fell in place for you too because of the radio and uh, oh my gosh. all the years that you've been doing this. Yeah, and that's how you and I met, of course, was yeah. our background and our love of radio and, and the radio commercials. Uh, and, and as I said, my actors that, that I've met and fallen in love with over the years that do the, the silly, fun radio ads, there's no difference between their 60-second radio script and a three-and-a-half-minute right. cartoon, except... Now they get to use all of the goofy voices that they really wanted to use all these years. I but used the, Beth for that in, in my opening, but anyway. Well, uh, if, if you recognize uh, this young woman's voice, she is in multiple episodes of the cartoons. I'm sure she is, yeah. She's yeah. Lucy, you're an air traffic controller. Uh-huh. You are a tardigrade teacher named Mrs. Pygmalion. <laughs> Uh, yeah. um, and I know I've got I was, you. In, oh, I, honey, I'm a honey badger. Name. Oh my gosh, and you are a honey I'm badger who's lunch the, lady. the lunch lady. That's right. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, I've done a couple other ones too. I can't remember mm-hmm. what they were, but they come in and I don't know. You just do it, and it's super fun. And, oh yeah. And and Chris, your husband has been yep. a race a racing announcer for the retired racing snails. Yep. And the I stole the show, and I can't even say a straight face without <laughs> even thinking it. Jake, your son, yep. was the PA announcer. Vice principal. <laughs> the vice principal in the cafeteria. Do me a favor, everybody. Just go watch episode 10 called <laughs> Build a Bear and listen to Jake hit a home run with the PA announcement about today's lunch menu. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. But It's remember, worth the price of admission, which is free, but it's still uh, worth the price of yeah, admission. Yeah, and remember when he just kind of riffed on it in the studio, and I don't know. He, all of his takes were perfect. You and I ruined them because we couldn't stop, couldn't laughing, stop laughing in the background. Yeah, it was awful. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. Yeah. And he just happened to be there with me. Mm-hmm. He said, hey, do you want to do this? And he's like, sure. And then he basically, because <laughs> he's too nice of a guy to say, but basically he said, "That's it's that hard, really? And, yeah, And this, really? is, this is what you do for a living? Yeah. Okay, good luck to you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it works out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but just just the fun of just the fun of doing all that stuff. I can imagine, you know, how like you said, you like cartoons forever. So this yeah. is kind of like a dream come true for you. It is totally a dream come. You know, I, I've loved almost every uh, career path that I've taken, but I've always wanted this. In other words, if somebody had given me when I was primarily advertising, if you'd given me ten million dollars, I wouldn't have used it to build an ad agency. Yeah, I'd have built an animation industry. Okay. You know, that's just always been my dream, and it, I still have to pinch myself that it's happening. It's right, kind of right. strange because I can't, I can't draw a stick figure without injuring myself. 
I'm a writer, uh, but fortunately for me, I've got the wonderful Brian Branch, uh, who's my animator. He lives out on the East Coast, and he just, I, I just, everything that's flown around in my head, he brings it to life. Yeah. So I'm scared for him and his family uh, <laughs> that he thinks that way, but the cartoons end up being gorgeous because of him. I can't even imagine what's floating around in his head, can you? No. No, yeah. Yeah. no it's a scary place. <laughs> it is a scary <laughs> Just place. Just stay in your own. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's supposed to be that wall between fantasy and reality yeah. that gets developed it's like somewhere around 12 or 13. Mm-hmm. The, my wall, it's just a blanket hanging on a rope. <laughs> And that's all it is. So one Flapping side, one side just wanders to the other whenever they want, and I really got no control over it. So it, it has its ups, and it has its other moments. But yeah, that's yeah. okay. I'll yeah. take it. Always, always creative. Mm-hmm. Well, I got two very creative people here, right here, right now. As far as now, Beth. Yeah. I, I, I you haven't had much chance to be creative well, too much with the Playhouse because well, of yeah. shutdown. But what's 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 up now? Well, actually, we've kind of been forced to be creative more than anything, any yeah. other time, honestly. Um, you know, we've been closed since March, um, you know, since the stay-at-home orders were issued. And, um, you know, we canceled 20 events between, you know, middle of March and uh, end of June. Uh, so that was a tough thing. Um, so I've been continuing to work. And was we were plugging forward with plans for our summer theater festival, which we do every year. Um, it's a seven-week festival where we do a different play every weekend. Central Michigan University comes in. We have a youth theater show that we do. Um, you know, full productions at the Playhouse. We have you know great uh, you know patron base that comes and supports that. Well. You know, as we get closer and closer, we about three weeks ago, I had a meeting um, with my directors um, and um, some of the other creatives that I um, uh, collaborate with and um, and consult with. And we came to the conclusion while we'd been worried about how do we bring patrons into the playhouse when that's allowed. You know, even with social distancing, you know, you cut your capacity by a third. That's 120 people. Can you get 120 people in there? Can you get people who are really willing to come? Right. Um, so we were really concerned about that. And then realized, wait a minute, what do we do about the actors? Because we have people, you yeah, know, there's several be- shows we have that are one, they're touching the same props, right. they're touching each other, they're hugging, they're kissing, they're using the same, you know, materials. You have crews backstage that are helping to hand off props. You've got glasses of water, you have, you know, dressers, people changing costumes quickly, you have makeup and hair people, you have, you know, just all of our tech crew. So there's like, there's just no way that we could actually go right. ahead and produce our normal summer theater festival. You know, while really trying to respect, you know, the social distancing that's really required to keep things, you know, you, where you we need them take, to be. Take away from the act if everybody wore a rubber suit. Exactly. <laughs> well, we thought about that. Yeah, yeah. I, thought, well, we I said, figured you would. Wow. Yeah. Everybody in a morph suit. Everybody, <laughs> yes. And we're putting you in bubble wrap. There you um, go. Yeah, you can roll people around. Exactly. <laughs> Little bubble. Well, I mean, it was really we, all, but it was kind of embarrassing to say that. Like I was really focused on the patrons and yeah. you know patron, you know, safety, and then all of a sudden I went, oh crap. Yeah. Everybody Everybody How do you stage. actually protect? Yeah, protect yeah. our staff, and you know, not that I don't think of them, but it was another, the fact that all of us went, oh. Um, so we came to a conclusion about three weeks ago. This was not going to be workable. Um, right. That there was no way we could do this season. So we've actually just picked up all of the shows that we scheduled for 2020. We've moved them to 2021. So the nice thing is we have a season planned ahead. Uh, you know, a year in advance, which is really great. Um, but then we said, how can we, you know, connect with our patrons, um, generate some income? and stay relevant um you know and how do we reach out to people where they are which is basically at home right. um so we are fortunate enough um being small that we could shift gears pretty quickly uh we've reduced our staff size which is normally about 40 between you know actors technicians um artists uh directors and everybody we've reduced that down to about five people um so we have a staff of a technical director production manager two production assistants myself um and then um uh, we actually have an intern coming in from central michigan university she's going to be with us for a while um but we decided we have enough skill set within that that if we're really careful in how we do this um we are going to be producing a virtual series and it's called from yep it's from our house to yours and um we are producing one person and two person plays um these are all you know works that we've not done before um and they're all the all of the actors are people who either current they currently live together or it's just one person um they're going to be directed by uh basically by zoom um for i would say 96 
six percent of the rehearsal process will be done via Zoom. Yeah. And then when we get into the tech uh, portion of it, um, everybody will be social distancing, um, wearing masks as as appropriate. Um, and then um, we will actually be filming these. Okay. Um, so we will. We have talked about live streaming um, because our time window is so short. Um, we feel a little bit more confident if we were to um, shoot the shoot the play, um, edit it, and then be able to put it up um, uh, through our either our a web service, um, a web streaming service, or directly through our website. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's just secure. Um, that's a big thing when you're doing um, you know plays. You have royalties and you have a right. lot of restrictions. Um, so we're trying to be respectful of that. But um, kind of for this first shot out, um, that's our goal. So we're going to have a three camera shoot. Um, we're super super lucky to have um, one of our one of our production uh, assistants is going to film school right now uh he's going into his senior year so he has a lot of experience with film um we have another uh, gentleman actually his name is billy mann um and he came here from california about four years ago he lives right here in town um he is he's shot uh film he's shot movies um and he is coming in to help us with this and he's volunteering his time uh which is pretty incredible um a lot of the folks who um you know are actors and directors are you know pretty much everybody at the playhouse gets paid um and this year the directors and the actors have voluntarily said no we're going to forget go getting paid this year just to make sure things keep going um you know we were so fortunate to have you know so much support for the capital campaign you know we reopened not even a year ago we're not even to our year one year anniversary and we were doing so well i mean we had so much programming happening Things were, you know, going like gangbusters, and then all of a sudden, it's, you know, a cement wall, yeah. and so you have to go. Where do you go next? So we're really fortunate to have so many talented individuals between the, you know, actors, directors, and production staff that are willing to help us through this um, because they know how important it is. They know they want it to be here when things reopen, and of course, you know, people are willing to support that. So. We're going to be we're going to be showing these. It's going to be the regular three show weekend. So even though it's going to be filmed ahead and edited and you know made to look really great, I mean we talked about production value. Um, we really want it to look nice, um, and then it'll be available to be seen those three days at the seven thirty time. Um, and people uh, we're asking people to you know you have to buy a ticket, a virtual ticket to come in. Um, we're going to ask for twenty five dollars for the ticket. Um, people can pay more. Um, normally that'd be twenty five dollars is what our normal ticketing fee is for an adult. Um, we're al- we're also going to do a pay what you may option as well, um, so that people can say, hey, you know, I I can't afford twenty five bucks because I haven't been working in three months. I still would like to watch this and support you. So here's X number of dollars, um, and we think that we'll be able to expand our you know our base and. And, you know reach people that may not be able to come uh, you know we're not planning on having a, an in-person audience if at some point we were allowed to um, we're just not sure how soon that might happen I mean you can have 10 people right now social distancing and that really kind of encompasses the actors and our current staff right, um, right. so you know, we're. I'm excited. Um, you know, we're getting a lot of support for this. I've got a lot of other, um, uh, some of the other local arts organizations are calling us once they found out we were doing this. So, how are you going to do this? And um, I said, you know, I said we're still working through the details, um, but feeling very confident about um, that this is going to come out well, and you know that. I think this is going to be the future for some time. I don't think it's just yeah. a summer thing. I think for the yeah, next right. year, <clears throat> yeah. um, this could be the way of things. I mean, even if we can have 50 people in the theater, um, will we still be able to maybe stream um, a live performance um, and reach people that either can't come, are immune compromised, aren't comfortable coming to a theater? I mean, there's some people now, they said, yeah, I'd come now. Um, but, you know, it's only one in seven about three weeks ago it was one in seven people that were actually comfortable coming into an indoor theater space yeah um so we're trying to be you know thoughtful and protect you know our workers and the actors and our patrons and say we still want to be here and still want to reach out and do something creative so that's can, can you where build we're at. A, can you build a quickie stage outside and you have maybe an outside hey but... it's interesting that you say that <laughs> yeah, as a matter figured, of fact i kind of figured you thought as of that, a matter like, of fact know. actually all of the, uh, the i hate to say that adult shows um but our adult performers um <laughs> those shows i think the price of admission just went up just went up a little so actually the um the shows uh that the plays that are being performed by adult actors um those will all be filmed and streamed the one thing that we are doing um is we have we always have a white lake youth theater production that we do in the summer we are still doing one it's a show called love being uh directed by cindy beth davis dykema who 
is a previous managing director of the Playhouse who's now working with me uh, part time and she's just a joy. Um, she's a whiz at anything to do with uh, youth theater programming. And we are going to be doing a show. Uh, it's 10, uh, 10 to 14 uh, actors. We're, we're only casting uh, high school students this time. We normally go down to age 10, um, but wanted to keep the group small. And um, it's probably a little bit easier to get high schoolers to social distance than it would be, you know, some uh, of our younger okay. actors. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe. Um, but, but really, uh, yeah. so all of those uh, rehearsals will be done outside. A lot of them will be done over Zoom up until probably a week or so before. Okay. And then they'll be doing um, outdoor rehearsals, only two to three people in a scene um, at, at any given time. And then we're actually looking at, at um, performing this one outside at the Playhouse. Okay. So um, you know, when you get that many people together, it's too hard to social distance. It's too hard to protect people um, and, and keep that, you know, that distance from one another so we're going we're looking at the north side of the playhouse where's that beautiful um shelby state bank had sponsored the patio that we have on the north side right. between slope on slocum and um hello wow. that was uh hello i think that was a motorcycle i don't no, know that was a truck oh just a truck that was a big old truck yeah just a big old truck i didn't by. realize i didn't realize my role was quite the drag strip that it oh, is oh yes yeah, yeah. Awesome. the turtle should have tipped you off i know yeah. i like the sound <laughs> effect though it's kind of nice and it's going to be on slocum street <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of perfect, um, and and looking at um, possibly you know for for those three nights of um, of the performance that we would close off Slocum Street because it just goes to the one right. little house there behind us, mm -hmm. um, which we've done for Taste of White Lake and a couple of other events, and have people be able to bring their lawn chairs and sit outside and watch these kids do a play. Um, and nice. so yeah, I think it's kind of a cool way and just you know kind of um, ask people to you know drop some money in a bucket um, yeah. as they come in or they go out uh, to support fourth the youth theater program um carmichael heating and air conditioning um has been approached about helping us out with this uh, especially the youth theater program they're always really great donors and um sponsors of our summer season and i'm uh you know we're going to be back to talking to him about about actually you know helping to underwrite this this project and so that would also be filmed but it's really um the goal would be that we would be performing this outside and kind of taking theater um, theater on the road. So yeah, you know, we kind of kind of need to do it right on the uh, the porch of the Lewis House too. There you go. <gasps> oh, that'd be kind of fun. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. It? Hey, guess what? <laughs> knock, knock, knock. I'm sure they would love that. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know, by the way, can ten, we use ten your porch? teenagers on their porch. <laughs> Yeah. Well, they did all that filming next last year, you know, next door, right from next door to the Playhouse. The um, I can't even remember the name of the movie that they filmed next door, and that was quite a production. But yeah, yeah so we're going to be doing that, and it's kind of it's really cool. I think it's another um, another arm of White Lake Youth Theater that you know maybe it's you know we take it on the road a little bit more um, in years to come. We can go and perform it at the gazebo down at Goodrich Park. Yeah, um, you know yeah. it's it's. Um, this or time even, has forced us to really get creative. In the stage and over in Montague too would probably yeah. work. Well, yeah. actually, we talked about doing it at the Bandshell this year, but the, yeah. the, well, with all the flooding we've had, oh, um, yeah. and I know that the Arts Council. I just spoke with Erin um, uh, from the Arts Council today, and she said they've you know they're not doing the concerts, the live concerts down at the Bandshell because even when you get a heavy rain there, it's like a it's it becomes yeah. a bog, and right. um, with all the flooding we've had, it's it's really not and we've had um, that. usable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're we're cooking along um yeah and, so you've been busy yeah yeah it seems like oh they've been closed it's it's kind of like the pastor that only works on sundays yeah god you can't be doing anything because you you know you don't have any shows <laughs> 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 so you know it's it's great um you know there's so many people um you know that i'm grateful for for all of the help and you know they're volunteering and i call them up and say hey i don't know this which if i don't know anything i'm i will you know i'm the first one to admit it um you know i just called uh, my friend dave regler who works at apple and said listen i i need to know what kind of a computer i would need software what is this and he's like absolutely i'm going to get back to you i'll see if you can get you a discount on this yeah. this and this um you know people are loaning us equipment um you know kim harsh who is an actor and she's actually doing she and her two girls are writing um, and producing and going to be acting in a show in, in a play called 42 um, that it's an original play and they're doing that this summer so it's wow. really exciting yeah. but she's Kim, Kim's very talented she's too, yeah. extremely talented yeah. and she's a great sound engineer so she was in yesterday with a couple of other people where we were working through the tech stuff um, people people want to be a part of this and that's exciting um, and they realize that it's necessary, but they also see that it's you know something new and it's kind of fun to go. Oh, let's see how we can make this work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
much like watching watching everything now on Zoom. I mean, you know, it's a yep. it's it's the thing. That's what everybody does. Yep. I tried to get the talking tune crew to do the Zoom, but they all kind of went Zoom. What? <laughs> So, Literally, uh, you click the link and it takes you. To, yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's very people. simple. It's very simple. It's a great Greg Roberts. I got to tell you, Greg Roberts calls me and says, "I we can do Zoom." It's like well, Greg. It's just you and me. Why would <laughs> we need to do Zoom? You know. I just need to see other people. Yeah. <laughs> outside yeah. my you house. You do FaceTime. I mean, one person. Come on. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, but Zoom. Yeah, it's 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 actually the the way to go yeah. these days, and you can get very creative that way. So yeah, it's we've we've done um, all of the um, before we were transitioning to this new series. Um, we did all of our uh, readings of uh, of the plays that we were going to do for the summer. We did through Zoom. Yeah, and we just do it for kind of fun too yeah. with our bunch of friends. We get together and read plays because we're nerdy like that. Um, <laughs> but it is a nice way. It's still a nice way to connect with people. So yeah. yeah. So we got you got about ten minutes. You got about ten minutes left. Is there anything else that we missed with uh, Mr. Wheeler over here? Should we be concerned about the car that just pulled in? No, I'm not concerned it, with the paparazzi. I, I know who it is. Okay, oh my good. gosh! It's, <laughs> it's, Send him up. It's best buddy uh, Peter Tripp the Curly had to get in the third row. So oh jeez, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Well, yeah. you know, they, they think about it. That was our last yeah. show in the studio. Yeah, it was you, me, and Peter Tripp. Yep. So that's all we had. Yeah, it was just it. us. So that was a, we talked all day. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. Yeah, that's why. That's why Beth must come back. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if she can do nothing else, she can talk. She can talk. <laughs> well, you know, Tim and I. Well, he said. Know. He said to me. He said after the show. He says, "I really like that gal." <laughs> <laughs> well, high praise indeed. Yeah. Well, Tim and I have known each other for quite a while. We've known each other since you were working at Hackley, mm -hmm. I think is when, because my husband knew you from Hackley. And, um, but Tim is also connected. We were connected in several ways, but um, Tim is also the chair of the Friends of the Playhouse um, Committee and has okay. been a, a tremendous help to me um, in you know, his approach to you know, organizing things. He is, he is a, um, a doer, which is awesome. Uh, helped with the strate strategic planning. I always hate saying that word. Yeah. Strategic planning. And, um, well and, played, Senator. Well played. Kind of like well cartoon so, versations. Cartoon yeah. versations. Yeah. And strategic that, planning of the cartoon versations. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we've got, you know, it's it's a great um, relationship between Tim and I. We have a lot of fun together. Um, he is talking about doing a really fun thing at the Playhouse come October. Are we looking at October now? We are looking whenever we get the whenever green Whenever we can get the green light to go ahead and have a bunch of people together. He's going to do this really cool event at the playhouse you want to talk about that a little bit yeah it's going to be called cartoon versation 2020 so we're going to make oscar say it all the time he's going to be the announcer <laughs> essentially it, it nice. is going to be a, a cartoon festival but we're going to bring in um fair state will be there with their animation program we're bringing in all sorts of social service groups we're bringing in the schools that are involved we're bringing in all the different law enforcement that's involved and essentially uh, we're going to show kids how you make cartoons we're going to show the cartoons we're going to have counselors and psychologists and therapists leading the cartoon versations and of course there's going to be pizza so, uh, so it's there really, it's like a, you know, we did something similar back in January of 2017 when yes. we did the launch party to let everybody know. It was super but fun. It, you know, this has grown exponentially, thank goodness. So we're going to bring all of these great partners uh, to show kiddos and families how all of these things are connected and how the cartoons can connect them to all the services that they need. But for the most part, we just want to watch cartoons and have fun. There you go. Well, yeah. and that pizza. Sound like fun? Yeah. <laughs> and pizza. What's and better pizza. than, you know, pizza and cartoons? That's Come right. On. Maybe yeah. popcorn. We have that too. Hey. I do remember when I was up on stage talking to everybody and they were being very polite and attentive and then I mentioned, I think the pizza just got here and that's when you yeah. cue the cricket chirp <laughs> and I'm suddenly standing alone in the in the in the theater. <laughs> but you look good. Thank you. <laughs> you look good. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, websites again, uh, rockatunes.com. Mm -hmm. You can get to everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But now you were talking about the books as far as reading along. Now, 
do can they order the books to do this or that is you know you and i were talking before we went on air about yeah. what's what are we working on in the shutdown and this is what we are doing is we are getting all of the books ready for printing uh there's actually one okay. of them on the press right now right. so uh we will have them available we have sponsors like this one here is brought to you by schneider electric so we're making as many of them as possible to give out for free right but we are also going to make them available for sale and uh, i have a wonderful uh, animator who is converting all of them to ebooks okay. oh, that's cool. so in that's the next cool. 30 days or so all of that will be done so there you go um i guess as one request feel free to find rocket tunes on facebook because we will be putting all of the updates there okay. as well. Yeah. Right. So people can get the, get at these books for themselves, whether they want to buy the book, whether they want to buy the ebook, which of course is cheaper, um, or if they say, no, I want to stick to the free part and watch the cartoons, great. Yeah. Just We want everyone to use everything out there. That's why we set it up the way we did. Yeah. But it's always so nice to go to read along with the book. I mean, mm -hmm. even back in the day, I remember in the what the forty-five record mm -hmm. you put on and you read along with the book. Oh Bing. yeah. Okay, you flip the page. Oh, I know. loved those. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny you said you just conjured up a memory. We were in a classroom and the teacher was uh, actually Sheriff Poulin had just done a presentation with the kids, and uh, they had copies of another cartoon so sheriff shows them the, uh, the protect tunes cartoon they have this great conversation sheriff's done then the teacher shows them a different cartoon and i had handed out free books to all the kids so they're all sitting on the carpeting and these were fourth graders okay. nobody told them to do this and of course if i were smart i would have filmed it but they all almost all of them if not all of them opened up their books put it in front and they were just following the cartoon as it went, and every time, you know, I had the book in front of me, and it's not exactly the same. Yeah. So every time the book would veer off, a couple of the kids would just kind of go, <laughs> like they're looking over at me going, does he know that he's kind of off script with the book? <laughs> so I'd wave to him, like, it's okay, we changed it a I little just that. for the for the format. Yeah. But it was the cutest thing in the world to watch them do that. They just all on their own wanted to follow along with their books that they yeah. had. Yeah. It, was, it was adorable. Yeah. Wasn't it? Ding, ding, yeah, turn well, the page. I didn't, I didn't, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that was like in the film strip too when yeah. you had to turn the... I love ding. that. <laughs> ding, I have not thought about those in a long time. <laughs> my, my lawnmower's coming back. Look at that. It's right, it's right. It is a party in the driveway. I know, party Jeez. in my driveway. I got a lawnmower coming back too. I drive back here all the back. time and there's not this much activity know, right? here, dude. Maybe it's you. It probably is. Everybody's <laughs> following <laughs> Beeman. <laughs> uh, we found the social magnet. Yes, yeah, Beth, oh, Beth Beeman, yeah. yeah. Oh. It's all her. It's all me all the time. Well, sir, thank you very for coming. And um, thank you. It's great to see you. And you know, thanks yeah, for the same. time. And so, thanks for coming in instead of on the phone. I appreciate it's that. It's so too. fun to see Tim. Yeah, yeah. It is so fun much to see other people. Yeah, the phone just made me sad when we thought about <laughs> doing it. Then, no, I'm on the phone all day now. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Let's do this. It's super so, fun. And then Beth, of course, you can come back anytime. Thank you. And thank you. Whatever, yeah. Whatever, whatever, whoever you want to bring back with you, or if you want to bring back some. Some of the actors or whatever. Oh, that, that would be super be. fun. Yeah, you and let me you know, know when. What I really like to do too is I'd like to get some some uh, uh, musicians coming here too sure. that would play music and this and that. I've we'll, got people. We'll put them on video. We'll put them on Facebook. We'll put them on YouTube. You know, so. I got people. Yeah, so check us out. The Playhouse at WhiteLake dot org. We have a really active Facebook. Uh, um, page and um, we've been doing shelter in place theater these little videos um, that we're putting out every week some of them are musicians some of them are literal stick figures doing ten, two minutes of a play like waiting for godot um, <laughs> you got to check that out because it's pretty funny yeah. um, so check that out uh, shelter in place theater it's a kind of a neat way to do some you know some of our we're actually just doing original content and putting it out there so did you come up with that name i did that is Genuinely spectacular. Thank you. I like thank that. You. Thank you. Th thank you. Thank you very much. That, that is spectacular. Oh, I Lord. like that. God, I, oh, it's a good thing I'm outside. My head is growing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oscar, well, it's always just a joy to see you. It, it is great to have you guys here, and I'll be uh, cutting my grass, I guess, it looks like. so. There All right. Go. Get to work, Got Oscar. my John Deere back, man. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm going to put my John Deere hat on, and I'm ready to go. Yeah. Sunscreen, too. And watch out for that turtle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have a good one, man. You, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Oscar. That was fun. That was fun. Yay!